Uh, welcome back guys. Uh, how's everybody doing? Today I have uh, yet another, again, a product review, exciting product review of uh, Behringer audio interface for you. And yeah, today we're going to look at the Euphoria UM2 audio interface and that is a USB audio interface. A very, very basic interface with uh, one mic line input, an instrument input and a headphone output. Uh, as you can see, it, it has uh, 48 kilohertz and if I turn it on the back, that's maybe an important point that people sometimes it seems miss. Uh, please pay close attention if you're getting an audio interface, which kind of outputs it has. Um, those are normal change outputs. So if you're new to audio production or recording, podcasting, making videos for YouTube, you may not have uh, studio monitors or a little bit more professional audio equipment because uh, I'm pretty sure most people have these types of connectors at home and connect that to their speakers or sound system as opposed to, uh, let's say, uh, balanced quarter-inch TRS uh, outputs. That's uh, usually used if you have, let's say, studio monitors uh, that have the signal going right into the speaker uh, because there's a difference whether you have a separate pre-amplifier and then the wire running to the speaker as those are uh, passive uh, as opposed to having studio monitors. Those are, I hope I explained this right, they're usually active. So the signal goes from your sound card directly into the studio monitor and the studio monitor amplifies the signal. Uh, and that's usually uh, better for having like the perfect reference sound. And from my experience, uh, not everybody has that at home. So that's the only thing that you should keep in mind. Uh, okay, here's a small mistake, not the only thing. But one of the important things that you can keep in mind uh, when picking an audio interface, um, if you want to buy an audio interface that has the TRS output, um, usually you can get around it by using the headphone output. But uh, in this case, uh, with, the, with the Behringer entry level one, you don't need that because it has these change outputs. So um, before I talk too much, uh, guys, this is really only supposed to be the introductory part, but I'm always, uh, a little bit over ambitious here. Um, let's just uh, jump to part two, the unboxing. As you can see in the navigation below, I'm taking this out of the box, show you a little bit of a close-up shot, see what the knobs uh, look like on the top. And then um, we're gonna do the listening test. And in the listening test or recording test, I probably should say we're gonna connect a dynamic microphone as well as a condenser microphone that needs the 40 L 48 volt phantom power. And then we're gonna do a little bit A-B testing, dynamic microphone, condenser microphone, and see what the sound quality of this interface is like. And I'm also gonna show you what kind of settings you can, can pick on a computer uh, that may also affect uh, the sound quality. And then after I used this for a couple of days and did some listening as well, uh, I'm gonna be back in part four with a quick summary and conclusion what I think about these budget entry level audio interfaces. So why don't we get rolling and get rolling with the unboxing. Let's go. So guys, I'm very excited. Let's have a look at the Be Behringer Euphoria UM2 USB audio interface. It's a really small, tiny, compact little interface. That's what I like so much about it. Um, let's open up the box, have a look inside. And the first thing we find is a manual and the Behringer sticker. And next uh, we see the interface. And one uh, unique thing about this interface is that it has the control knobs at the top. And I can zoom in for you a little bit here. So it give you a little bit more of a close up shot. And yeah, why don't we take this out? Um, these interfaces are really, really nice because they are so small and compact. You can power them simply with a USB cable. The USB cable is included. It's a USB 2.0 cable. And it's also very uh, protected packaging right here. It even has uh, some moisture absorbent. So um, really, really uh, safely packaged. And uh, let's have a little bit of a close up, close up shot here. And uh, yeah, if I touch this, obviously this is not metal. It's a plastic casing. Um, the knobs feel very nice, so that should be great to regulate the volume uh, and the input gain. Obviously, if you get a more expensive uh, Behringer interface, 
the more expensive ones they uh, usually have a metal casing so it, depending on your preference obviously this is maybe a little bit lighter because it's plastic but uh, the metal casing is also very very nice to have the benefit of the smaller one uh, like i told you before is that it has this uh, chinch output which comes in really handy because you don't need to buy a studio monitor and then get these quarter inch trs cables most people probably just have these uh, standard standard speakers at home where you can connect that to your uh, sound system or your computer speakers so that might be a consideration um, obviously one quarter inch trs is very nice but it's a, it's an extra cost you know you have to buy a bigger interface you have to buy probably these cables maybe you have to buy some small studio monitors um, so really check what's your personal preference or your budget other than that guys there is not much more to say to it other than uh, what i'm going to do in this review is i'm going to test this uh, tiny little audio interface with two different microphones like i mentioned before i'm going to test the dynamic microphone as well as a microphone that needs the 48 volt phantom power and we're going to do some a b testing um, i'm going to use this interface for a while um, we'll listen to some music see what the sound quality is uh, when I listen to it, I'm also going to show you what you can change in the software to get uh, better recording results. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So really, really nice, uh, small, compact unit. Um, I'm really curious to see how it sounds. Uh, let's jump into the computer and let's get rolling with the sound test. So guys, like promised, now the sound test of the Behringer Euphoria UM2 USB uh, budget entry level uh, USB audio interface and I connected a dynamic microphone to the interface and as you can see here the interface is powered entirely via USB and uh, while I'm talking there should be a green light showing up here if I go too close you see there's a little red light uh, that indicates um, that you potentially uh, have signal uh, the signal is a little bit too hot and uh, well, basically what I did, there are these three knobs at the top and the input gain, I almost turned, uh, no, I turned it f uh, up entirely because the dynamic microphones usually, it, it's kind of normal, the dynamic microphones are not as sensitive as condenser microphones. So you usually have to put the input gain much higher than when you use the 48 volt phantom power uh, condenser microphones. And uh, guys, uh, I'm using the Shure SM58. Uh, that's what I usually like to test with. Uh, it's a great uh, microphone to test uh, with. Gives you a great reference sound. And uh, that's all I have to say right now. So why don't we uh, just go uh, quickly ahead and switch over to the condenser mic so that you have a little bit of an A-B test between these two microphone types because depending on which microphone type you use, uh, the uh, you have totally different sound characteristics. And I think this is a great way to compare uh, how this interface performs. So let's switch over to the next mic. So welcome back guys. Right now I switched over to the next microphone. Uh, as you can see here, uh, another light has turned on on the interface that indicates that I switched on on the back to 48 volt phantom power, which is required for using condenser microphones. And you probably also noticed that my voice sounds a little bit different. That's because this microphone has a little bit different sound characteristics. And uh, uh, quickly referring to the input gain, while previously I had, had to turn the input gain all the way up, uh, right now I think I put it in a two o'clock position. So it's still more relatively high, but no, not anywhere near as high as with the dynamic microphone. And uh, what I always notice is that these uh, condenser microphones they are way more sensitive to uh, to your environment. They pick up way more stuff that, that's uh, acoustics in your room. So for example, if you wanna record Let's Plays and you still have an old computer with noisy fans running, then a condenser microphone may or may not be the uh, right choice for you. Personally, I always like to use uh, dynamic microphones instead because they pick up the sound just uh, right in front of them and cancel out all the other noise that happens around them to a pretty uh, fair degree. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to work with. 
Although, uh, as you have just heard, they have a different type of sound. So not everybody likes the sound of a dynamic microphone. Some people, they want the sound of a, a condenser microphone. Uh, keep in mind, this is a budget uh, condenser microphone. So uh, if you have a more professional condenser microphone, that might even sound better. But then again, using like a really high quality mic with a budget uh, audio interface, um, maybe not everybody's going to do it. I think most people who use uh, like a budget solution like this, they will pick two budget items. But uh, in any case, uh, I hope that give, give, I'm convinced this gave you a good idea of how this uh, interface sounds. And finally, let's quickly jump into the computer and show you some of the recording settings that you can pick uh, when working with this audio interface. And then in the last part, uh, I'm going to quickly su quickly summarize my experience. Uh, also, like uh, I did some listening tests, listening to a bunch of music for a couple of days. So what I found comparing this uh, audio interface when listening to music, for example, to my internal sound card or other audio interfaces. So let's jump into the computer and look at the recording settings real quick. So guys, right now I jumped into the computer and I'm going to show you the recording settings. Uh, for this uh, Behringer Euphoria UM2 USB audio interface and uh, I also tested it on the Windows 10 so don't be surprised it really doesn't matter that much uh, whether you're on Mac or Windows I just plugged in the USB audio interface and it got detected right away and uh, if I go to sound you can see it uh, sh I think it showed up on the both operating systems both on the Windows 10 and Mac OS uh, as a USB audio codec, that's uh, how the device was called. And basically, since I can't do that much in this menu, um, let's quickly jump over. If you're on a Mac, you can just go to applications, scroll down to utilities. And down here, we have the audio MIDI setup. Uh, if you're on the Windows, just go to the corresponding settings page. And because the, the settings uh, are basically, no matter whether you're on the Windows, or whether you're on a Mac, it's kind of the same. So let's have a quick look. So you have 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, but the limitation uh, of this budget uh, Behringer USB audio interface is simply that it's only a two channel, a two channel 16 bit interface. And while on the package they say, oh, this is 48 kilohertz. Yes, of course, this is 48 kilohertz, but they don't mention on a package, oh, it's only 16 bits. So just keep that in mind, but um, that's kind of normal. If you have a budget interface, uh, you don't necessarily can expect that it supports this 24 bit uh, resolution. And uh, if I quickly compare that to the built in uh, line out, the built in sound card of my Mac Pro, you can see, well, the Mac Pro offers 24 bit uh, and also 24 bit at 96 kilohertz. So <laughs> to be quite honest, my built-in sound card from the Mac Pro is uh, superior. And for comparison purposes, I can also connect my very old, trusty, very basic FireWire interface. And you see even the FireWire interface uh, supports 24 bit at uh, these uh, higher uh, kilohertz frequencies. So, um, guys, uh, with that, uh, the other, um, almost the more important part that I found was that when I was listening to music, um, I quickly going to jump out of the computer to show that to you. Uh, basically, what I found was, um, as you can see, uh, I only have the desktop speakers. So uh, I thought this interface might be really nice because I can just use the change cable and then connect it to my speakers. And, um, but what I noticed is if I turn the volume here and I hope that focuses, uh, I basically I turned the volume all the way up uh, and then I was listening to a song on my computer that had a lot of bass and maybe I can demonstrate this to you here. Uh, see on the Mac you can use the keyboard to control the volume and I had the system volume turned up all the way. The system volume turned up all the way and then on the USB audio interface, turn up all the way, the sound going into my speakers. And I was listening to the music and the sound was distorted. It was just distorted. And I was just like, damn, why is this distorted? That's not good. Uh, maybe something is wrong with the audio interface, but um, it appears that if you turn this to the three o'clock position and you uh, turn down the volume 
on the Mac uh, Pro, then it's uh, it's all right again. It doesn't distort anymore. And so what I did next, I tested it on the Windows as well. And I really felt on the Windows, um, the driver uh, didn't give it such a hot output signal from the computer. So let's say I connect this audio interface uh, to my Mac or I use it on the Windows. Uh, on the Windows, the, the, the sound the signal wasn't that strong. So it wasn't, uh, wouldn't distort. So maybe this distortion is just a thing with the Mac uh, uh, driver for this USB interface. So if you're on a Mac, just be aware, don't turn it up all the way, or you might uh, hear a distortion when you're listening to music. Um, the recording, uh, it works fine. I mean, you, you hear the sound recording, I did just the recording test. So overall, it's a good interface for, for what it's worth. And uh, guys, uh, I just wanted to let you know, let's uh, quickly wrap this up. <laughs> let's jump to the conclusion part and summarize everything one last time. Now guys, we have jumped to part four, the summary and conclusion part. I'm just gonna give you a quick recap right now. First, I introduced you to the project in part one. In part two, I did an unboxing and I showed you some close-up shots of the Behringer UM2 USB audio interface. Then in part three, we did connect uh, various microphones to the microphone input and tested the Xenix mic preamp that this USB interface has. Uh, and I also showed you inside the computer what kind of recording settings you can pick uh, inside your operating system and i also pointed out to you that this is not a 24-bit interface but it is a 16-bit interface and uh, yeah guys you, you will be the judge whether you uh, like the sound quality of the 16-bit interface um, or whether you like the dynamic microphone uh, sounding better than let's say the condenser microphone and the one thing I noticed that I also pointed out to you is that when you listen to audio, that uh, the signal can be a little bit distorted if you turn it all the way up. Uh, I pointed this out to you because I'm actually speculating right now that probably the Mac driver uh, is configured so that it has a little bit more a higher output volume and that may cause the distortion because on the Windows, I didn't notice it nearly as much. So guys, this brings this product review slash tutorial to an end. Uh, I'm convinced you learned a few useful things, not only about this audio interface, but about microphones in general. With that, I draw this uh, product review slash tutorial to a conclusion. Um, guys, I have a lot of other useful content on my channel, other microphones, dynamic, as well as condenser. And I also have audio interfaces, for example, such as the Yamaha AG3. Uh, I invite you to check those out as well. I see you in the next video and as a subscriber. Guys, all the best to you, take care. And because you just watched the product review slash tutorial of the Behringer UM2, you might also be interested in my review of the Yamaha AG3 USB audio mixer. That's also a really cool audio interface to check out. And I'm really amazed about how many people have already subscribed to my YouTube channel because of the useful content that I provide here. And right now you can subscribe as well. I see you in the next uh, video and maybe in even one of my online courses. Uh, take care.